Guys, let's start by reviewing, when it comes to reviewing the Formula 1 season, let's start by reviewing the brilliant, possibly best ever title race in Formula 1 history, the title race between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. And of course, it all started in Bahrain. Now, we have to start firstly quickly with pre-season testing where with the new regulations regarding the rear floor and uh, changes to that, you know, cutting the downforce on that part of the car, Red Bull clearly at the start of the season were getting on better with that, um, you know, change to the regulations. They looked much better in testing. Mercedes in testing looked a bit erratic. The pace was there in terms of they were still able to compete with Red Bull, but they weren't the quickest team in Formula 1 anymore, like they were, of course, easily in 2020. Max Verstappen at the first Grand Prix got pole position, looked very, very strong in all of the sessions, but as you can see on your screen, he did not come out on top in the end. And it really was a very, very exciting battle between the two and really set us up for what we were going to get for the rest of 2021. So Verstappen got away from pole in the lead. There was a safety car, I think, for Mazepin. Um, he led the field away from the restart as well. And then uh, Lewis Hamilton made an early pit stop. Verstappen reacted a few laps later um, and Hamilton then got the lead of the Grand Prix and would be basically the leader for the rest of the race, even though they would pit, you know, both for another time. Hamilton would pit first yet again. Verstappen would stay out in the lead and do a few more laps. So he had fresher ties for the end of the Grand Prix. And then eventually, because Verstappen did have won the quicker car that weekend, and secondly, uh, the fresher tyres, it was inevitable that Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton were going to have to decide who won that Grand Prix on track. And it did come down to the last, what, three or four laps or so. And Max Verstappen, as you can see, had his go. But it was an illegal overtake, as you can clearly see there with him on the other side of the curb. Went round the outside at turn four. But like I said, he went over the track limits, came out ahead of Lewis Hamilton, but thankfully led him back through. And after that, it really was that because Max lost his momentum and couldn't have another go at Lewis Hamilton. But like I said, that battle, and it was a great battle for a couple laps there between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. It set us up beautifully for the rest of the season. And then two weeks, or I think three weeks later at Imola, of course, it was the second race of the season. Now with Imola, Red Bull again were looking very quick. Mercedes looked as though they were about a tenth or two away um, in, you know, the true pace of things that weekend. Red Bull, though, made a mess of their final qualifying laps, meaning that Lewis Hamilton got pole position with Perez, surprisingly second for Stappen, um, in third. But at the start of what was a wet Grand Prix, Max Verstappen, of course, got the lead. A brilliant start by him right down the inside. Hamilton tried to go around the outside, but really... As you can see, I think from this shot, the, there wasn't really the room at that particular corner to try and do that. I know some people may think that Max pushed Lewis off the track, but I don't think that's the case. I think Lewis tried to go around the outside, but, you know, there just isn't, again, the space and grip really to do that at that particular corner at Imola. So Max Verstappen got into the lead. Hamilton had some front wing damage, but it didn't look as though it was... Uh, particularly bad, thankfully. And then, for the rest of the first half of the Grand Prix, I would say, Max and Lewis were kind of trading blows in terms of fastest laps, and, you know, one would go much quicker than the other. And then eventually, in the last, say, five laps or so before the first pit stop to go from the intermediate tyre to the uh, slick tyre, Lewis Hamilton really started to gain on Max Verstappen and it was getting really close up front. Then they both pitted at the same time for dry tyres. Lewis lost, I think, a couple seconds to Verstappen, but immediately, especially once they started lapping the slower cars, Lewis started to gain again. It looked as though maybe by the end of the Grand Prix, Hamilton would do what he did in Bahrain and get the lead um, and, you know, win the Grand Prix. But Lewis Hamilton, in a very rare moment, made a mistake and ended up 
Um, thankfully for himself, not massively in the barriers, but enough in the barriers to break his front wing. Um, at the, I think, was it Tosa hairpin? Tried to lap Russell up the inside, went onto the wet part of the circuit, and then went a bit wide, and then, of course, went onto the gravel. Then it's, again, slightly into the barriers, broke his front wing, and then toured back to the pits. It was a, I have to say, quite a basic error because you would expect a driver of his quality to really know that you know if he moves offline he's going to be on the wetter part of the circuit but i think he was so focused on catching verstappen that um he you know probably didn't account for that when he moved to lap russell down the inside of the hairpin thankfully though and i have to say Luckily, very luckily, there was a red flag about a lap or two after he came in for a new front wing. Because after he came in for a new front wing, he was a lap down and down in, I think, ninth or 10th place. Bottas and Russell then have a massive accident. Red flag comes out. Hamilton's then allowed to reclaim the lap he lost. And then eventually, of course, got back up to second place. And like I said, he was lucky that that crash happened because if he did not... Um, or sorry, if Bottas and Russell did not have their crash and it wasn't a red flag, then Lewis probably finishes in, what, 6th or 7th? I don't think he finishes anywhere near the top 5. So, yeah, I think Lewis was lucky there. And Max Verstappen, he would uh, go on to win the Grand Prix. A thoroughly deserved victory. He was looking the quickest driver that weekend. Didn't get the pole, but in the race, drove a brilliant race and ended up winning but that would be out of the opening races the only uh, real big success for the red bull team considering the pace they had because for the next couple races firstly in uh, portugal red bull they had the pace but they weren't maybe because they weren't with and with max verstappen as well they weren't used to being in such a great position all of the time and having such a good car maybe the pressure was getting to them i don't know but red bull around this time especially in qualifying even at the race like i just said in imola they were unable to execute and deliver you know a pole lap um or you know really keep it together throughout the entire race and not make any critical mistakes for example in portugal mercedes locked out the front row max verstappen made i think a mistake or two in qualifying that led to him being quite a bit slower than the two mercedes and i think he had his first lap time deleted in q3 so he probably could have ended up higher on the grid if he had not had such a messy q3 then in the race he made a good start um i think he got away in his in the position he started in which was third but on the safety car restart after kimi raikkonen retired with a broken front wing uh, he got past Lewis Hamilton and then was right behind Valtteri Bottas. And it looked as though at that point in the opening phase of that Grand Prix, looked as though Verstappen was inevitably going to pass Bottas and win the Grand Prix. But then made a mistake towards the end of that lap. I think the final real corner um, out of that very slow right-hander, Max Verstappen, got a bit wide. I think probably had to... Um, lift off the throttle a bit and that allowed Lewis Hamilton who was still very close behind to get a run on ha on, on Verstappen and then get past him down into turn one then Lewis Hamilton as you can see very soon after he passed Valtteri Bottas for the lead of the race raced off into the distance whilst Max Verstappen was uh, held up behind Valtteri Bottas he would eventually pass Bottas just after the only round of pit stops for both Valtteri and Max so Max would get up into second place but he would not get any higher than that because lewis hamilton was just simply too quick and had built enough of a lead before max had got past valtteri so lewis took his second win of the season a very good win um in the algarve then a week later at the spanish grand prix lewis hamilton got pole position uh that weekend from max verstappen in second even though it was close in qualifying it did look as though Mercedes had clearly the quicker car and it was just Max Verstappen in terms of him being so close in qualifying it was a case of Verstappen being so great in getting that close to Lewis for pole position then at the start though Verstappen with a brilliant move down the inside very close to having an accident with Lewis Hamilton Verstappen just threw his car down the inside of Lewis Hamilton 
got the move done. Hamilton had to steer out to avoid an accident because if he steered in, then I think both of them probably would have retired from the Grand Prix. And then Verstappen, of course, was in the lead for almost the entire Grand Prix. Almost the entire Grand Prix. Uh, when it came to the first round of pit stops, Verstappen just about at the end of that phase of the Grand Prix stayed ahead. Hamilton, though, was still really close behind. And it looked as though that there was still a good chance Hamilton could still pass Verstappen down the main pit straight with DRS open. But Mercedes decided to copy their strategy from the 2019 Hungarian Grand Prix and go for another pit stop onto a set, I think, medium tyres to try and catch Verstappen yet again, but on fresher and faster tyres. And that's exactly what Lewis Hamilton did. A great performance yet again, like he did um, at that Hungarian Grand Prix a couple years ago. And eventually he did catch Max Verstappen and he did pass Max Verstappen for the win of that Grand Prix. Now, I will say, and I think I may have said this on the channel at the time, after the first four races where Red Bull looked, I'd say, very good for most of the first four races, I think the Spanish Grand Prix Mercedes were definitely the quicker team. Um, after the first four races, honestly, my thought uh, process going into, or my thoughts rather, going into the rest of the season was, despite Max having a very good car, Lewis and Mercedes are just, you know, continuing to get it right. And I think they're probably going to end up winning the championship. And that's what it looked as though the season was, where the season was heading in terms of the narrative for the title race. But in Monaco, it was a completely different story and it was one of, for sure, the turning points of the season. So in Monaco, um, I think rather surprisingly, with Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes did not get it right at all. He had a very poor qualifying session, qualifying down in, I think, was it sixth place or seventh place? Very, very poor. Max Verstappen would qualify second, but because Charles Leclerc um, started uh, or did not start the race, of course, Charles Leclerc got pole position on Saturday. Max Verstappen was the man who started on pole in Sunday's Grand Prix and led away and completely dominated the race. Lewis Hamilton, we were thinking would make progress, not great progress, but enough progress to probably get two or four extra points compared to what he was heading for after qualifying. But his race was just as bad, if not worse, than qualifying because he didn't or wasn't able, rather, to pass um, Pierre Gasly in the Grand Prix, but also um, wasn't able to stay ahead of a couple cars behind, being Sebastian Vettel, surprisingly, in the Aston Martin, and also, critically, Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. So, very bad race for Hamilton, and this was definitely one of the biggest turning points of the season, because if Lewis Hamilton had won this race... Very good chance that mentally, with the momentum being so much with Hamilton and Mercedes, that Max may have, in you know, his confidence may have dropped and he wouldn't have gone on to the successes he had a few races later in this title fight. So absolutely critical it was that Max Verstappen won this race because it allowed him to properly bounce back in the title race, especially considering uh, Lewis's poor weekend. And then... After that, we came to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix at Baku. Now, qualifying was a very exciting session. Charles Leclerc, again, surprisingly, was on pole position. Lewis Hamilton, though, bounced back in Baku by qualifying on the front row and qualifying second. Max Verstappen would qualify third. In the race, though, everyone knew that Mercedes and Red Bull would be quicker. Both of them, by the time we came to the first pit stop, which was around, what, lap 10, lap 11... We all knew that Hamilton and Verstappen and even Perez would pass Leclerc because Leclerc and his car was just simply too slow. They both did that. Hamilton would pit first, but his pit stop would be about four or five seconds too slow. So Max, who was still out on track, he, you know, went a lap later on the tyres, pitted and came out ahead clearly of Lewis Hamilton. Perez also pitted, I think, two laps later than Hamilton. And he, as you can see on screen, he would come out ahead of Lewis Hamilton. And then the rest of the race, it looked as though it was going to be Max winning with Perez second and then Hamilton third because Hamilton 
um, had set his car up to be very quick down the straights, but in the middle sector, where all the corners were, Perez was pulling away, and Hamilton just wasn't able to keep up with the Red Bull that was so much better in the middle sector. And like I said, looked as though the race was going to continue on being, you know, just that for Stappen, Perez, and Hamilton. But suddenly, with just a few laps to go, Max Verstappen had an enormous tyre failure at the very end of that long pit straight, meaning that Perez got into the lead, and most importantly at the time, Lewis Hamilton was up to second. Then a red flag came out because um, of concerns, I think, about the tyres and whether anyone else was going to have a tyre failure. And also they did have to clear up Verstappen's car and the uh, debris from the pit straight. So that meant Lewis Hamilton was, of course, second place on the you know starting grid because now with the red flag uh, situations in Formula 1, now they do standing restarts instead of a restart behind the safety car like they used to do a few years ago. Um, now, because second place at the starting grid in Baku has the inside line, all Hamilton had to do was get a better start than Sergio Perez. And because there was only two laps to go, if Hamilton got that better start, Lewis Hamilton would win the Grand Prix and would probably take home as, as well the fastest lap point and would become the championship leader and would really hammer a vital blow against Max Verstappen in this title fight. But in a very surprising moment, but also very critical moment, Lewis Hamilton, he got the better start, but he did not take advantage of it because straight into turn one, because according to him, he um, accidentally, I think, switched on a uh, setting that wasn't supposed to be on or didn't, you know, some type of brake setting was in its wrong mode, um, Lewis Hamilton locked up and went off at turn one and ended up finishing, I think, down in 13th or 14th place. I think both Mercedes ended up out of the points that day. So an absolutely horrible race for Red Bull, uh, for Mercedes, sorry. Perez would win the Grand Prix for Red Bull, his only win of the season. Great to see, by the way, Perez winning in Baku, a track where, you know, Sergio has been so, so good. But, in you know, now that we're at the end of the season, I don't think this was the, the you know, the absolute critical moment for Hamilton where he lost it all. But definitely this is one of. And we'll, you know, and you'll see, guys, later on in this review of this title race that when Max had his certain issues at, you know, any given point, there were moments where Mercedes easily could have capitalised, but they did not capitalise fully. This is one of them, and I would say definitely this is one of the biggest reasons, probably the second biggest reason why Lewis Hamilton is not an eight-time world champion. Even if Hamilton doesn't pass Perez and, you know, gets into turn one and doesn't lock up and ends up finishing second... Lewis Hamilton would be world champion now by, what, 10 points or so. So this is definitely one of the biggest moments. It's not the biggest moment. We'll get onto why um, another moment is the biggest moment and the biggest reason for why Lewis Hamilton is not champion. But this is definitely the second biggest reason. A massive mistake. One of the biggest mistakes of his career. And, yeah, I honestly, at the time, couldn't believe, and no one could believe that Hamilton would make that mistake because... He's been so cool and calm under pressure in the last few years, and that's what's, you know, allowed him to win so many championships and, and races. Um, again, it was such a surprise that that happened, but it did, and it was a massive sigh of relief for Max Verstappen. At the next Grand Prix, though, uh, Max in the French Grand Prix would deliver a brilliant lap in qualifying to get pole position ahead of Lewis Hamilton, but the race was less straightforward. Uh, Max Verstappen, as you can see, went off at turn one and Lewis Hamilton got into the lead. Max Verstappen would drop into second place and Hamilton, by the time we got to the first round of pit stops, Hamilton was about, I think, four to four and a half seconds clear of Max Verstappen. So it was looking as though Mercedes were heading for not a dominant win, but, you know, a, a comfortable enough win in France. But Max Verstappen would pit sooner than Lewis Hamilton, and with the undercut, he would get back past. But 
The two Mercedes of Hamilton and Bottas were still right on his tail um, after that first round of pit stops. Mercedes would stay out to the end, but Max Verstappen and Red Bull would copy what Lewis and Mercedes did uh, in Spain and pit again for a fresher and softer set of tyres. And Max Verstappen would pass Valtteri Bottas and then eventually, with about three or four laps to go, he would pass Lewis Hamilton and win the French Grand Prix. This was another critical moment in the World Championship. If Max did not win this race, again, things could have been so much different. And I think, you know, given what we saw at the next two races after this, the, uh, the two races at the Red Bull Ring, I think this race was definitely responsible for the momentum that Max had at the time. A brilliant win. And I think this win as well was the first time in the season where Max Verstappen and Red Bull as a team beat Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes in a proper fight where, you know, Hamilton and Mercedes did not make it easier for them with a mistake or anything like that. This was the first time they had properly beaten them on circuit in a, in a Grand Prix with Hamilton and Mercedes, you know, at their best and not being, you know, like they were in Monaco, you know, way off the pace or, like I said, making a mistake. And... It definitely, at the time as well, clearly gave Verstappen the belief that he could win the World Championship because um, in the next couple of races, like I said, Max Verstappen would obliterate not just Hamilton, the entire field with two dominant wins in Austria. Um, yeah, dominant pole positions, dominant race wins. Lewis Hamilton in the first race at the Red Bull Ring in Austria um, he would finish in second place, but would be, I think, 20 seconds or so um, off the uh, leader Max Verstappen by the end. And then in the second race, Hamilton was so slow and he was as well so slow on the particular tyres he had in the second stint of that Grand Prix that he was passed by not only his teammate Valtteri Bottas for second, but even Lando Norris for third. Very poor race for Hamilton this was, and at this, you know, the end of the Austrian Grand Prix, which was the second race at the Red Bull Ring, Hamilton was, I think, probably at his lowest point at this point of the season because, like I said, in Baku, made the mistake. Monaco, he had been poor, and Verstappen had won there. Uh, Verstappen beaten him in France and then was beaten the week before in Austria convincingly and, and Hamilton was just nowhere near and Mercedes as well nowhere near Red Bull and Max Verstappen and it looked as though at this point where Max was I think 30 or so points clear looked as though as long as Max didn't suffer a couple um bad races where you know he didn't score that many points or any points at all looked as though Verstappen just kept consistently banging in podiums at the very least, you know, until, say, the summer break, looked as though Max was going to be heading for a big championship lead going into the summer break, meaning that Lewis Hamilton, of course, would have it all to do going into the rest of the season. But at the time, Toto Wolff made the point that one Verstappen DNF and the title race would be, you know, completely different. And that is indeed what was the case a couple of weeks later at Silverstone. So at the start at Silverstone, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen were racing very hard on the first lap. Max started on pole after winning the first ever sprint race in Formula One. Hamilton started in second. Like I said, they were side by side all the way through the first lap. And eventually when they got to Cops, Max was ahead, not massively ahead. Lewis Hamilton was still right on his tail and went up the inside at Cops. Max Verstappen, though, as you can clearly see, Still had his car ahead and was on the racing line. Hamilton with, I think, quite a desperate move up the inside. Tried to overtake, but of course made contact with Max Verstappen. And Verstappen would go off into the barriers. Now, I'll reiterate what I said at the time. For me, this was definitely Lewis Hamilton's fault. I mean, Max Verstappen, yeah, you could argue could have given more space, but... I think realistically at the time, you have to, you know, you'd have to look at what position Max Verstappen is in. He's on the racing line. He's in the lead. And if I go back to the picture before, 
Lewis Hamilton does not have enough of his car alongside really to make this overtake work. If you're going to overtake a cop's corner down the inside, you can, you know, it is possible, but you have to have your car at least, you know, fully alongside, if not slightly ahead, if you are going to make it work. If you're this far behind, then either the other driver is going to have to go off the track themselves on purpose to you know, get through the corner with you without having a crash, or a crash is going to happen. And that is, of course, what happened between the two. And Lewis Hamilton got a 10-second penalty for that, which I think was the fair decision. And after that, wasn't looking good for um, Lewis Hamilton, because um, with him, you know, taking Verstappen out, right before there was a red flag to clear up Verstappen's car from the barriers... Charles Leclerc did get into the lead, and it meant that at the standing start, the standing restart of the Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc would be on pole, and uh, Charles Leclerc would actually lead the pack away. And at the time, we thought Hamilton would, because the Mercedes, you know, all season long has been quicker than the Ferrari, except really for Monaco um, in that in that little fight there. We thought Hamilton, a few laps into the restarted race, he would pass Charles Leclerc and Hamilton. Even though he had a 10-second penalty and would have to serve at his pit stop, Hamilton would still comfortably enough win the race because his main rival was out. And I think as well, Valtteri Bottas was behind, I think, the two McLarens um, at the time, or one of the McLarens, certainly. So not like Valtteri Bottas would be able to, you know, challenge Lewis Hamilton in any way. But... Surprisingly, Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari very quick and so quick even that um, he pulled away from Hamilton in that first stint. Hamilton would then pit before Leclerc, serve his penalty and Hamilton would come out behind Norris and Bottas who then went up into second and third place. Leclerc pitted a lap uh, later and came out miles ahead of everyone else in the lead and Hamilton, even when he passed Norris and Bottas, it looked as though Leclerc was going to comfortably win, but sadly for Leclerc, his car or his engine suffered a problem and Lewis Hamilton, towards the final three or four laps, would pass Charles Leclerc down the inside for the race win and take yet another win at Silverstone. I will say, though, it was a moment... Um, you know, this moment, it was, a, again, a big turning point, but I think this was, again, a bit of a stroke of luck for Hamilton because if, let's say, Max Verstappen, you know, had got through the corner and Hamilton had got through the corner and they had made no contact and Max had maintained the lead, given the pace we, we were seeing at the time from Red Bull and Max Verstappen um, and given, as well, the weather conditions, it was very hot, that Grand Prix, I don't think Hamilton wins that race. I think Verstappen probably wins that race because the Red Bull and the hotter conditions definitely the better car. And Max at the time was probably at his peak during the season. So Hamilton, I do think, was a bit lucky uh, that you know what happened happened and that his penalty did not at all affect his race result. And Hamilton would cut the lead right down and then going into Hungary, it would be all nice and close again. But in Hungary, yet again for Verstappen, it would be a uh, bad race. So Max Verstappen, because Valtteri Bottas piled into the back, I think, of Lando Norris, he, um, Norris would then go into the side of Max Verstappen. Verstappen miraculously would continue in the Grand Prix and would finish the race, I think, in ninth place for Red Bull, despite having basically no rear floor to speak of. Um, at the end of that Grand Prix, after the contact between um, himself and Norris and, you know, Bottas hitting him as well. So Max, was, sorry, <clears throat> Max Verstappen would have yet another Grand Prix with pretty much no points to show off. Again, only two compared to what Lewis Hamilton was going to have, which we thought Lewis Hamilton was going to have, you know, 25, maybe 26 points, you know, with the extra point for a fastest lap because Hamilton started the race on pole position and was leading um, when the red flag came out, was leading the race still. So at the resumption of the race, and because Valtteri Bottas was also out, Hamilton had no real competition. Looked as though it was going to be basically 
the same race we got in 2020 at the same track where Hamilton, you know, gets into the lead from pole, obviously, and wins by an absolute mile. But after an absolutely colossal mistake by Mercedes to keep him out on intermediate tyres as they were, you know, touring round on the, I guess you would call it second formation lap. Um, an absolute colossally bad decision from Mercedes to keep him on the inters because as, like I said, they were touring around on that second formation lap. It looked, you know, the track, it looked pretty dry. So everyone else came in for dry tyres, but Lewis Hamilton would take the start by himself and would obviously keep the lead, but would have to pit a lap later for a set of dry tyres and then would drop to the very back of the field still racing. And that, again, is another massive moment in this World Championship fight. Probably the third, I would say, biggest reason why Lewis Hamilton um, didn't win the championship. Because, again, Max Verstappen basically out of play for a podium or even a top five finish because of the damage that he had. Hamilton has another open goal and Mercedes just absolutely cock it up. And even though Lewis Hamilton would eventually come through... And, you know, he would finish up in, because of Sebastian Vettel's disqualification, he would finish in second place. It would still not be really regarded as enough, that result, because it should have been a race win, an easy race win. And if he got that win, then again, things could have been very different. He would, though, because he finished in second and because... Uh, Max finished down in ninth place. Lewis would take the championship lead going into the summer break, but if Lewis, like I said, if he had, even if he had just finished second in Baku and had won in Hungary, Lewis would have been world champion by 20 or so points. So, and I have to say it is quite rare to see Mercedes doing this, but they did it, you know, in two big moments this season where, you know, when a rival of the team, a rival of Lewis Hamilton makes a mistake or is out of the race for whatever particular reason or out of play for whatever particular reason, normally Mercedes and Hamilton, you know, sweep up after them and take home the full points on offer. That's, for example, why Sebastian Vettel lost the World Championship to Lewis Hamilton in 2017 and 2018 because when Vettel made a mistake or retired from a race or, like I said, was out of play for whatever reason, Lewis Hamilton would maximise the pain and take home as many points as possible. But in those two particular races, Lewis missed out on what? Probably 30 points at least. Just not good enough. And again, big, big reasons why Lewis Hamilton did not win the World Championship. But at the midway point in the title race... This is how it looked. So Max Verstappen was second. Lewis Hamilton was in first place. Lewis led by just mere eight points over Max Verstappen. Um, so like I said, with the Baku and Hungary race, if Lewis had got those extra 30 points, he would have been in a commanding lead going into the summer break. Max had five wins at that point. Lewis had four. Max had as also five pole positions with Lewis having only three which I have to say, quite surprising that Lewis Hamilton in the first, what was it, 12 races only had three pole positions. Um, the other pole positions, uh, other than Verstappen and Hamilton, by the way, were uh, Leclerc had two um, in Monaco and Baku um, as well. And who else had a pole position? Oh, Bottas in Portugal. So uh, It was only 11 races, one at the first a few races before the summer break. It was only 11 races. So yeah, those are the other drivers who had pole position in the first half of the season. But um, I think as well you could see in regards to Max Verstappen, if we focus on him a bit, even though I've said, you know, Hamilton should have got, you know, more points in Baku and Hungary, despite Max suffering the tyre failure in Baku, getting took out by, uh, <coughs> sorry, Lewis Hamilton at Silverstone, and having be took out really of play in Hungary, was still only eight points behind, had one more win and two more pole positions, which is why I'll get onto later why, for me, Max Verstappen is definitely the deserving winner of this World Championship because, like I said, despite scoring no points in Baku, no points in Silverstone and only two in Hungary, 
was still basically levelish with Lewis Hamilton going into the summer break. And then the summer break ended and the season restarted. Now, Spa, we won't get into that. Of course, no race took place because of too much rain on the circuit. Max Verstappen, though, would take the win and uh, get half points. I think, was it... Um, was it 12 and a half points he got for that win? Hamilton finished in third and got seven and a half points for third place. Of course, Russell amazingly finishing second after his second place in qualifying. So the first real race after the um after the summer break, first real race was Zandvoort. Of course, Max Verstappen's home race, we unfortunately missed out on having this Grand Prix on the calendar in 2020 due to COVID. So thankfully, we had it on the calendar for 2021. And it wasn't the greatest race in terms of entertainment, but Max Verstappen did not disappoint in front of his home fans getting pole position and winning the Grand Prix. Hamilton and Mercedes tried their best with um, a couple pit stops to try and get after Max Verstappen, but Verstappen and Red Bull were just simply too quick that weekend and could not be stopped. And Max Verstappen, after, you know, getting the win, even though there wasn't a race again at Spa, and then winning at Zandvoort, looked as though Verstappen had reclaimed the form that he was um, in around France and the two races in Austria. It looked as though Hamilton and Mercedes, yet again, had a lot of work to do if they were going to win the World Championship. But then came... The Italian Grand Prix. So uh, we had another sprint race that weekend. So Hamilton started on pole for the sprint race. Uh, Valtteri Bottas was second. Verstappen was third. Hamilton had a poor start to that race and finished the sprint race in fourth. Bottas would win the sprint with Verstappen in second and Ricardo third. Meaning that because Valtteri Bottas had a grid penalty because of a new power unit, Max Verstappen would start the Italian Grand Prix on pole position and in second place would be. Daniel Ricciardo. Um, and then at the start of that Grand Prix, things did not really, before we get onto the obvious thing, things did not really go the way of both title rivals, uh, both title contenders, sorry. Max Verstappen lost the lead down to turn one down uh, to Daniel Ricciardo, who was very quick that weekend, and McLaren also very quick. Lewis Hamilton, as you just saw, he lost position to Lando Norris. So both title contenders were stuck behind the two McLarens. Max Verstappen, though, wasn't really all over the back of Ricardo, um, And it wasn't clear, really, that Max was massively quicker than the McLaren. When the first pit stop came, that's really where Max's race properly went downhill. He had a very long pit stop, lost about, I think, 10 seconds or so in the pits uh, with a pit stop problem. Hamilton then, I think around the same time, passed Lando Norris on circuit and was pretty much guaranteed Hamilton to be ahead of Verstappen when Hamilton came in for his pit stop. But Hamilton, when he pitted, had a slow pit stop as well. He lost about two, three, even maybe four seconds in his pit stop. So it would make things actually a bit closer when Hamilton came out on track when it should have been comfortably in Lewis Hamilton's favour. And then when he came back out on track, he was obviously positioned on the inside of turn one because that's where the pit exit feeds out at Monza. Max Verstappen coming down the pit straight and because of, you know, his position relative to Hamilton, he was always, and I think he, rightfully so, had a go at passing Lewis Hamilton because the space on the outside, you know, was there for him to do that. The Max Verstappen tried round the outside on Lewis Hamilton, but unfortunately, because both of them would not give any, you know, any quarter to the other, they ended up having quite a big crash in the end. As you can see here with Max Verstappen, um, almost, well, not Max Verstappen, but his rear tyre almost seriously injuring, if not killing, Lewis Hamilton in this incident. Um, and yeah, for me, this incident, like I said at the time, was a 50-50. Max Verstappen was too aggressive in the second part of the chicane. Lewis Hamilton, though, I think he knew he was there. There's no doubt about it. He knew he was there. You would have seen him in his mirrors coming down the pit straight and into the braking zone as Hamilton braked uh, for turn one. 
Lewis Hamilton, if he didn't want it, if he didn't want to have the accident, Lewis could have left him room and could have, you know, turned out slightly of turn two to allow Max to be up the inside. And maybe they would have got through the chicane or the exit of the chicane without any contact being made. Uh, but yeah, for me, it was a 50-50 in terms of blame, both out of the Grand Prix. Daniel Ricciardo would go on to win that race, of course, with Lando Norris in second. The first McLaren won two um, in nine years. And funnily enough, the first one-two finish of the entire, and first and only, I think one-two finish, of the entire Formula One season. That just shows you, doesn't it, how exciting a season it's been if we've only had one one-two finish and it was from the team who finished fourth in the Constructors. That's absolutely mental. Um, but even though it was a 50-50 in terms of blame, in my opinion, for this incident, it, without a doubt, this benefited Max Verstappen more because Hamilton was... You know, if let's say Verstappen did not go for the for the incident or not did not go for the overtake rather here on Lewis Hamilton and it didn't result in this. Lewis Hamilton was clearly quicker than Max Verstappen that weekend. The Mercedes was by far the quickest car that weekend. And an example of that could be seen later on in the Grand Prix after these two retired. Because Valtteri, Bottas, who won the sprint race, started at the back and finished in third place, I think. So Again, clear evidence that the Mercedes was the quickest car that weekend. Um, and if Hamilton had been ahead of Verstappen on the exit of that uh, pit lane, Lewis Hamilton finishes either second or in a brilliant first place. I think it would have been tough still for him to pass Daniel Ricciardo, but because Lewis had the same power unit and would have had fresher tyres, Lewis would have been in um, a very good position and like I said he probably would have finished at least in second place so without a doubt it benefited him more than Max Verstappen the Red Bulls that weekend were not really that quick so Max Verstappen like I said um, not too disappointed that they ended up both out of the race and then at the next Grand Prix in Russia we would have an absolutely mental Grand Prix Max Verstappen um, if I remember correctly had a grid penalty for this incident that the FIA gave him, but he took a new um, engine penalty anyway, so that penalty meant nothing in the end. So Max Verstappen would start the race at the back, meaning that we thought Lewis Hamilton would almost certainly be starting the race from pole position, but after a wet, dry, and truly mental qualifying session in Russia, Lando Norris would be on pole position from Carlos Sainz second, Russell third, and Hamilton, I believe... Um, started from fourth, but Hamilton would have a poor start and would drop down the field. Max Verstappen would have an amazing start to that particular Grand Prix. And as you can see here, at one point, was not that far behind at all uh, from Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton, though, and Mercedes were clearly quicker um, in the second stint and really for the rest of the Grand Prix. Mercedes were quicker than Red Bull that weekend, there's no doubt about it. And Verstappen was just trying his best to get as many points as he could to limit the damage of starting from the very back of the grid. But Hamilton eventually would work his way up to second place and Lewis Hamilton would be then right behind and on the gearbox of Lando Norris, who had been in the lead for most of the Grand Prix and it looked as though he was heading for an easy win, but Lewis was going to fight him to the end. And honestly... If it stayed dry, I think Lewis probably would have finished in second because Lewis was stuck behind Daniel Ricciardo, Lando's teammate, for a long time earlier in the race. And um, what do you call it? Lewis wasn't able to pass because the McLaren was way too quick in a straight line. And as well, passing at Sochi is not really uh, the easiest thing to do. But Lewis would still be right behind him. But when the weather turned and the rain fell, Lewis Hamilton, in this race to the finish to get, of course, the race win, would fare better than Lando Norris. Norris stayed out on track because he believed that the rain would not be that bad. But then the heavens opened, Lando would spin and then end up falling down to, I think, 7th or 8th place in the Grand Prix. And Lewis Hamilton... You know, after switching onto the Inters and getting the decision right, Lewis Hamilton would take a race win. A very hard-fought race win was a lot harder than it 
really had to be, but he got the race to win. But the real winner from this Grand Prix, without a doubt, was Max Verstappen. Because Verstappen, despite starting from the back, would finish in second because he made such a good decision on when he went to Inters compared to, um, who was it, Leclerc, Sainz, Alonso, um, and others at the time. Verstappen made such a good decision in that regard that he would jump them all and finish in second position. So Max Verstappen limited the damage, um, I think, as much as he really could in that Grand Prix. And it would start again going the way of Max Verstappen after this Grand Prix, as uh, Lewis Hamilton would take a 10 place penalty, I think, for a new ICE. Lewis Hamilton would, though, get pole position. He wouldn't start pole position, but he would finish up in first place in qualifying. If he, of course, started the race on pole position, Lewis would have won it comfortably because Valtteri Bottas won it comfortably, uh, and he obviously uh, qualified in second place. Max Verstappen, though, would capitalise on Lewis having a grid penalty and finish in a comfortable enough second place. Lewis Hamilton tried his best to come through the field and to get after the... Leaders, at one point, his pace was so good, we were thinking maybe he'd be quick enough to win the Grand Prix, amazingly, from 10th on the grid. But he slowed up. Uh, Bottas and Verstappen started going quicker. Lewis did, I think, try his best to stay out on track and do um, as, many uh, as many laps sorry, on the, you know, on the tyres he started on and to try and go to the end. But I don't think, honestly, the pace would have been there at the end if Hamilton had stayed out. So he had to pit again, and he ended up finishing, I believe, in fifth place. So gave away eight points to Max Verstappen. And after that, Hamilton, of course, was very disappointed. Thought he really should have got better and that Mercedes should have done better on the strategy. But that's the way it was from that Grand Prix. But going into the US Grand Prix... Uh, the first race in the American, uh, North American continent, we thought that because it's such a good track for Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton in the past, we thought that Lewis would bounce back and get a vital win for his world championship. But we were surprised that Max Verstappen would actually get pole position, amazingly, at the Circuit of America. It's a brilliant lap by him, but it would not be such an easy win for him, as Lewis Hamilton, as you can see, got into the lead at the start, down the inside. Max tried his best to try and get the lead back on the exit of turn one, but it wasn't to be. So Lewis Hamilton would be in the lead. But Max Verstappen and the Red Bull car as well were clearly quicker um, in the first stint. And really, through the Grand Prix, when Red Bull were on it, you know, at least the same tyres in terms of tyre... Um, tyre life if not better tyre life max and red bull were clearly quicker than mercedes mercedes only really quicker down the straights at the circuit of americas so max would stick right to the back of lewis through the first stint then at the first pit stop max would pit sooner than hamilton and i think mercedes really made a mistake uh by not reacting to max's pit stop they would try and go on a different strategy by pitting lewis a few laps later in uh, his first stop and also his second pit stop in comparison to Verstappen to try and, you know, by the end of the Grand Prix, be in a position on fresher tyres to win the Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton would close down Max Verstappen in a very tense finish to that Grand Prix, but Max Verstappen had enough pace and the Red Bull car had enough pace on the worn tyres to just about win the American Grand Prix. That what right there was one of the biggest moments in the World Championship for Max Verstappen because, like I said, we all thought Hamilton would be probably the winner of that Grand Prix that weekend because of his history around that circuit. But Max Verstappen, almost on away territory, um, or in, a, in football terms, kind of an away match for Max Verstappen, got a vital win for his championship. And going into Mexico, because of the the nature of the conditions in Mexico, we all expected Red Bull to be miles quicker than Mercedes, but Mercedes actually locked out the front row in qualifying in Mexico. The Red Bulls were hampered by a certain Japanese driver uh, in qualifying um, in an Alpha Tauri, but Mercedes, credit to them, they delivered when it mattered in qualifying, but in the race, 
it would not be a good one for them as Max Verstappen went right round the outside of both Bottas and Hamilton at turn one. Hamilton would be in second, Max Verstappen would be in first, Valtteri Bottas would be taken out by the McLaren on the far left there, Daniel Ricciardo. So he would be out of action and wouldn't be able to help um, Lewis in the Grand Prix. So Max Verstappen would go on to a very comfortable race win. Red Bull, I think, were probably disappointed in the end that Sergio Perez, who was third and was definitely quicker than Hamilton in that Grand Prix, and the Red Bull was miles quicker than the Mercedes in that Grand Prix. I think Red Bull were disappointed they didn't get a 1-2 finish there because the pace they had, they should have easily had a 1-2, but it wasn't to be. Max Verstappen, though, took another very good race win. And at this point, going into the final four races, it looked as though Verstappen was very, very close now to winning the Drivers' World Championship. If he was to get another win, say in Brazil or in Qatar, the next two, if he was to get another win in any of those two, then it would pretty much, unless something amazing happened, it would pretty much be over and Max Verstappen would be world champion. But in Brazil, the tide turned dramatically. As in Brazil, Lewis Hamilton, um, after a disqualification in Friday qualifying, he would start the sprint race from the back. He would come through, though, to finish in, uh, I think, was it fifth place in the sprint? And then would have a much better, of course, uh, starting position with another penalty he had for a new ICE. He'd have a, a better starting position he, that he would have had if the normal qualifying session that was on the Friday was actually on the Saturday. He came through the field, I have to say, very, very quickly, even passed his teammate very quickly in the Grand Prix. And very soon was up to second place right behind Max Verstappen and in a position definitely to win. Mercedes that weekend were miles quicker the Red Bull, the straight line speed of the Mercedes as well was very, very good. And it looked as though uh, that Max Verstappen was in a bit of trouble. Max Verstappen, by the way, did very well to uh, get the lead of the race because he actually started in second place alongside um, Valtteri Bottas. Verstappen dived down the inside and got the lead very well. But Hamilton, with fresher tyres from the last pit stop, was now starting to catch Max Verstappen. And Verstappen was going to have to try every trick in the book to stay ahead and that is indeed what he did as um i'll just switch on to it now here you go so lewis hamilton tried to go around the outside he did actually go around the outside and he got the overtake done technically but max verstappen braked very late up the inside of hamilton and on reflection max verstappen basically just pushed hamilton straight off the circuit went off the circuit himself as you can see here. But I have to say, this was on the part of the FIA, who I think in regards to Hamilton versus Verstappen in this 2021 season, of course, we'll get on to later, how they played a vital part in deciding the championship. Um, I thought up until this race, they had got it mostly right. I uh, say 90, 95% right in regards to these two, but this is where they really started to get it wrong. How on earth Max Verstappen was not penalised for what he did, which was a clear case of forcing another driver off the circuit, I do not know. I, I just don't understand how he didn't get a penalty. Even though Mercedes requested a review of the incident, they still rejected it. I just don't understand how that was the case, because in a later Grand Prix, Max got a penalty, um for or one of the penalties he got was kind of similar to this even though his penalty was officially for um, gaining an advantage by leaving the circuit he also tried in that race to push Hamilton off and in, if he did it would have resulted in a lot worse than this so I'm I'm very surprised that um I, I'm very surprised that Michael Massey and the FIA decided to not review, properly review the incident and to give Max Verstappen, say, an additional time penalty for that Grand Prix that would have dropped him to third position. Lewis Hamilton, though, would, after that, he would overtake Max Verstappen and win the Brazilian Grand Prix, uh, not a Brazilian Grand Prix, the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, but of course in Brazil. Definitely one of Hamilton's best weekends. I mean, yes, the 
the car, the engine was, you know, fresh and at its absolute best. The car aerodynamically was at its absolute best. I get that. But he was also at his absolute best. And that was definitely his best moment of the season and his best win of the season. And at this point, the momentum, without a doubt, swung in Lewis Hamilton's favour. Because in the next race in Qatar, um, Lewis Hamilton would get pole position dominantly from his teammate Valtteri Bottas and Max Verstappen in third. Bottas and Verstappen, though, would get a grid penalty for the race for failing to obey yellow flags in qualifying, so they would both start five positions lower than they qualified. Max would make his way up to second in about, what, five laps or so. Lewis, though, would easily win the race. It's hard to know whether Max could have fought Hamilton for victory there because Max was actually catching Hamilton quite quickly um, in the opening phase of the Grand Prix, then suffered damage to his front wing. So it's hard to say whether Max would have caught and passed Lewis. Again, hard to say whether that would have happened, but Lewis was definitely the best driver that weekend and got a very important victory for his World Championship and continued to keep the momentum in his side of the title race and then it came to the first ever saudi arabia grand prix the penultimate race of the season that of course took place about what eight days ago uh did the race in jeddah and what a controversial race it was so at the start of the normal race that's what i'll call it until the red flag hamilton and bottas got away um comfortably at the front of course max verstappen could have got pole position on saturday he should have got pole position on Saturday, but he made a critical mistake at the final corner that led to him um, f uh, starting the Grand Prix from third when he would have been on pole by about half a second. That's how quick he was in qualifying. Hamilton would start on pole, Bottas second, and as I said, they would get away uh, very comfortably at the front of the field. And really, for that first stint up until the safety car when Hamilton and Bottas pitted, and then the red flag period, Mercedes were easily quicker. And it looked as though Red Bull and Max were going to need some luck, really, to bounce back against Mercedes. And luck is indeed what they got. Because after Mick Schumacher crashed, the red flag came out. And after the two Mercedes had pitted under the safety car, which came out before the red flag, that left Max in the lead. And then, like I said, the red flag came out, meaning that Max was now in the lead and could go on to whatever tyres he wanted to and have a free pit stop. And Mercedes, at this point, were probably down um, in the gutter after what happened. But Lewis Hamilton, as you can see on this picture, would get back into the lead on the restart of the Grand Prix. Max Verstappen, though, would break very late around the outside, and he would cut the circuit in re-overtaking Lewis Hamilton, the race was red flagged again because of a crash between Russell, Leclerc, Perez, um, and Mazepin. So the race, like I said, was red flagged again. So Max gave up the two positions to Ocon and Hamilton uh, because, like I said, he clearly gained position on those two on that restart. So at the third standing start of the race and the second restart of the race, it was Ham uh, sorry, it was Ocon on pole, Hamilton second, and Verstappen third. Hamilton, on that third restart, he got a good initial launch. It looked as though he was going to get into the lead easily. But Max Verstappen showed that he has uh, his balls on the size of cannons by absolutely throwing it into a position, in his car, into a position that looked quite dangerous right down the inside at turn one, forcing Hamilton to make contact of Esteban Ocon. Verstappen, though, fair and square, would get the lead of the Grand Prix with Hamilton in second, but. Max would be on the medium compound tyre and Lewis would be on the hard compound tyre. The hard compound would perform much better in the race conditions compared to um, compared to the medium. And that was really the case all weekend long in Saudi Arabia. And eventually, Lewis Hamilton would have a go at repassing Max Verstappen for the lead of the Grand Prix. Verstappen, though, who was so desperate to keep the lead, of course, for the World Championship, would dive down the inside yet again on Hamilton, similar to what he did at Interlagos. Hamilton, luckily, uh, well, not luckily, but I'd actually say brilliantly, avoided the incoming crash that was going to happen if Hamilton had uh, kind of followed what uh, path Verstappen was on. Verstappen would cut the corner and would keep 
the lead. And Max would get, rightfully so, a five-second penalty for this, which effectively did cost him the um, race win. He would, though, before he got that penalty, he would uh, be told, rightfully so, to give Hamilton the position so that they could avoid that type of penalty. Max, on the approach to the final corner, would slow down. But because there was a long DRS straight right after that final corner, that's why Max was letting him through at that particular corner. Because he knew if he let Lewis through and then got a great exit from the final corner, Max could be on the lead straight away going into turn one. And Lewis knew this. So when Lewis came up behind him, Lewis, you know, tried not to pass and tried to to outsmart Verstappen, but they ended up both outsmarting themselves. And Lewis Hamilton went into the back of Max Verstappen. That caused damage to the rear tyre and rear end of the Red Bull, which meant the Red Bull was much slower now than it was before. And it was pretty slow compared to Hamilton before. Hamilton would have front wing damage, but not enough front wing damage to mean he wouldn't win the Grand Prix. Eventually, after some more shenanigans where Max let him through again into the final corner, but then dived down the inside to try and again get the DRS. Verstappen tried it again. But Hamilton this time wise to it and would force Verstappen um, to go a bit wider through the final corner that, than he would ideally want. And then Hamilton would get into the lead, stay in the lead, and Hamilton would win in Saudi Arabia and get the fastest lap point. Meaning that going into the final race of the season that of course took place yesterday, they were level on points. Couldn't be set up better, could it, for the final Grand Prix of the season. And... In qualifying, firstly, Max Verstappen would get a brilliant pole position. Lewis Hamilton would be second. We all expected Hamilton to be a bit quicker than he was. But you have to give credit to Max Verstappen. He did a great job in getting pole position. But at the start, it wouldn't matter. Because Hamilton, similar to what he did in 2014 in another race where he was involved in a, um, in a very tense title fight that time with his teammate Nico Rosberg, Got a great launch from second place, got into the lead, and Max Verstappen would try to have a go at Lewis Hamilton into the turn six, seven chicane, down the inside at turn six, and forced Lewis to go off the circuit. Red Bull would be unhappy that um, Lewis kept position, but really there was nothing else Lewis could do. If Lewis turned into the corner, then there would have been an accident, and of course, that's not what we wanted in the final Grand Prix in this title showdown. So the right decision was made to not give Hamilton a penalty or to order Lewis to let Max back through. And then after that, because Lewis was on the harder but more durable tyre, Lewis comfortably pulled away from Max. Max pitted earlier than Lewis for um, a pit stop, but then was held up behind some midfield cars. Perez tried his best to hold Lewis up and actually held him up, I think, for eight or nine seconds in two laps to try and give Max the best opportunity possible to try and fight back against Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton, though, would again pull away. There would be a virtual safety car for, I think, Giovinazzi's Alfa Romeo. Hamilton would stay out on track. Verstappen would pit but he would still be quite a bit behind. On a fresh set of hard compound tyres, he would bring the gap down from 17 seconds to 11 seconds, but with the amount of laps left, it looked as though Max was not going to be able to catch Lewis in time to win the race and win the World Championship. But suddenly, Nicholas Latifi had an accident on the exit turn 14, and the safety car came out, meaning that Max Verstappen could have a final go at winning the World Championship. Max Verstappen would pit for soft compound tyres, but Lewis Hamilton, in an absolutely massive and crucial mistake, would not pit. I don't know exactly whether it was Hamilton deciding to stay out or Mercedes deciding to stay out. I think it was Mercedes, to be honest, because normally it's the team who instructs the driver to come in. I don't think Hamilton is the type of driver who would come in on his own if he didn't know the team would, you know, would want that. But that was, without a doubt, an absolutely critical mistake by the Mercedes team. I know people may say, well, you know, it wasn't that big of, of a reason and Max still would have been, you know, right behind him and he maybe he would have lost position if he had pitted. But you have to remember 
the only way realistically Max Verstappen was going to overtake Lewis on the final lap of the race yesterday was if um, he was on a much softer and fresher compound than what Lewis Hamilton was on. So Max Verstappen was always going to pit because that was the only chance he had to win is if Max pitted. So Hamilton had to pit because if he pitted, then he would have covered off that eventuality. And if Verstappen had stayed out, Hamilton would have been in the position that Verstappen was in on a much fresher and softer tyre. And then Hamilton probably would have won the race and the championship. So that, without a doubt, is the biggest reason and the biggest mistake Mercedes have ever made in Formula One that I can think of as to why Lewis Hamilton is not sat right now as an eight-time world champion. Yes, we'll get into the controversy surrounding the lapped cars and all of that, but if Mercedes pit Hamilton, in my opinion, Hamilton wins the championship. Simple as that. Even if Max, you know, stays out on track, Lewis would be, again, in the same position Max was in and would be on much fresher tyres to then win the race on the final lap. But on that final lap, Max still had work to do to win the Grand Prix, but the race got going again on the final lap. And in, for me, the greatest moment in Formula 1 history, and you can go back to my race watch along, uh, where me and Nib were, were shaking with excitement and awe at what was happening. An amazing moment happened. Brilliant racing for basically the whole final lap between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. And Verstappen would overtake Hamilton and would win his first ever world championship. He is the first ever Dutch world champion. And he stopped Hamilton from becoming the first eight-time world champion. Mercedes would win the Constructors' Championship, which I think mostly is down to their pace in the final few races. And I think Mercedes... I think they do deserve Mercedes to win the Constructors because I think as a team they have been stronger. You know, their driver lineup especially has been, has been uh, stronger than the Red Bull one. But when it comes to the Drivers' Championship, like I said earlier, and now that we've reviewed all of the action during the season, for me, Max Verstappen is the deserving winner of the Drivers' Championship because it was this close, remember, in the end. But, you know, if you factor in that... He had a tyre blowout in Baku, was took out by Hamilton at Silverstone, and also was took out in Hungary. If, you know, if those, let's say the Baku incident doesn't happen, he wins there. Silverstone, let's say he finishes second there, to be fair to, to, be fair to Hamilton. Then Max probably would have had the championship won in Saudi Arabia or even Qatar. So that's why for me, Max Verstappen deserves to win the championship because if you look at Lewis's season, yeah, there are certain moments where Lewis is unlucky, like Monza, for example, even though I don't think he was totally blameless in that incident, he definitely, you know, did not benefit at all from that incident. Um, for Staffan didn't benefit overall because obviously you want to be in the race still, but if Hamilton continues in that race at, at Monza, I think Hamilton probably ends up the winner so I'm not, you know, going to discount that Hamilton had his unlucky moments, but in comparison to Verstappen, I don't think there is, are as many. And I think Max Verstappen um, was the better driver this season and I think deserves to be world champion. And I'll now get on to this, the standings at the end of it all. And what a battle it was. Max Verstappen winning the world championship. Ten wins for him, eight for Lewis Hamilton. Um, Three of Hamilton's, uh, three of the last four races were wins for Hamilton. So just shows you how good that late spurt in the season was for Lewis. Max, nine poles. Lewis has uh, five for his Formula One season, which is, I have to say, out of 21 races I think we've had this season, nowhere near enough for him. I think even... No, next year's regulations, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in terms of who will be the quickest team. I think Lewis will want to uh, do some work on that because qualifying was definitely an area where, compared to Verstappen, he was lacking a bit. And Max winning the championship by eight points, of course, getting the fastest lap point as well uh, that he had before all of the safety car madness and um, all of that. But like I said, Max Verstappen, in my opinion, is the deserving winner 
of the World Championship. Great title fight for me. After what happened yesterday, it is the greatest title fight of all time that I can remember. There's other great ones, of course. Senna versus Prost. Um, Schumacher Hill. Uh, Vilna, Schumacher. Hacken and Schumacher. Uh, the three-way fight in 07. Obviously, 2008, 2010, 2012. The Rosberg-Hamilton years. All of that is great, but I don't think any of them can match this title fight. But like I said, Max Verstappen, for me, is the deserving winner. Hopefully, these two can do it again sometime. If not, we will remember this as the time or the season where, quite possibly, the two greatest drivers of all time went head-to-head -head in a great, intense fight. And we got maybe... You never know, of course, what Max Verstappen will do in his career. We maybe will get the answer to who is the better driver in the end. Of course, Max Verstappen has a long way to go in his career, so you never know what could happen and has a lot to you know, catch up on in terms of world championships, race wins and pole positions. But Max Verstappen, what a season. Great um, driving from Hamilton also. But Max, absolutely brilliant. And he is a world champion.